Hey, what's up guys, I'm Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 22 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 53 today for the Brazilian Grand Prix in Season 3. If you guys did miss the previous one at the Mexican Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one, because that was a very explosive episode in more ways than one. Because one, the championship has been blown wide open a little bit, and things have very much changed in the standings and the other thing that blew wide open well was that the engine our engine to be specific it was our first engine related no points finish and our very first mechanical failure uh, this entire season we've actually had a very reliable season so far uh, but at the worst time possible our engine failed us the internal combustion engine as well so literally the most important part of the entire PU failed us and as we were maybe entering a phase of the race where we were looking to chase after P1 and I was actually very confident and I was quite buoyed by the pace we were showing that I thought we could have gone on to uh, at least challenge for the race win at Mexico which would have changed things so much in terms of the championship for us really got us in there instead we are now left with the championship looking like this Alexander Albon who won the Mexican GP leads by seven points to Sebastian Vettel with plenty of work to do. A couple of points then back is Pierre Gasly and then a further few is Leclerc and then myself. We're a whopping 21 points away from the championship lead with only two rounds to go. One of them is a sprint round, which is, of course, this episode, the Brazilian Grand Prix. So there's a chance to get more than 25 points potentially today. But it's a big ask in a season where we've struggled to overall match Vettel. And he's been doing an insane job of getting that car higher up than I feel like the car could get. But to be fair to us, in the last couple of episodes, we've actually been out qualifying Vettel a few times. And generally in the races as well, we've been getting some better positions. I mean, just taking case in point, the Singapore Grand Prix, also the Italian Grand Prix as well. So the two races just before Mexico, we actually were beating Vettel. And I feel like we were building momentum, which makes that DNF even more painful because it kind of stops the momentum in its tracks. We were winding up just at the right time. We we're getting the speed out the car and the races right about the right time. And that has just blown that and put a nail in everything. Is it going to be the nail in the coffin for us? Who knows? Who knows? But we've got a big job to do at Brazil to try and come back. But at the same time, my mind is also now going towards if we can't help ourselves, then I've got to try and do my best job anyway to be a rear gunner for Sebastian Vettel. You know, even if we're able to finish, you know, let's say if he goes and gets a win or second place, if we're able to finish right behind him. That will still help him out for the championship. So it's not a case of, you know, I'm either going to be selfish for myself or just not going to try. Even me trying to win the race or trying to get the best position is inadvertently going to help Sebastian Vettel out because if I do finish behind him, but ahead of all his rivals, that's going to be a massive positive. So in every regard, we're going to have to try and give it our all. And also remember, there is a Constructors' Championship to maybe try and wrap up. And mathematically, we could actually seal the Constructors' Championship to Today at Sao Paulo, which would be quite a relief because, of course, we haven't even won a Constructors' Championship, let alone a Drivers' Championship, on this game yet. We painfully lost that to Mercedes at the end of Season 2. So I would like to wrap that up this episode, if we could. Everyone now is plateauing in terms of the R&D chart because we all know there's a regulation change, a pretty big one, on the way for the next season. So that's at least one saving grace. No one else is going to be getting better towards the end of this season. We're all kind of stationary. And where we left off at Mexico with those two Ultima engine upgrades, I think our car was actually quite good. You know, the R&D chart, you know, we are technically sixth place on that chart. But as I've said many, many times throughout this entire season, you've got to remember the scaling is so zoomed in. So in reality, if we were looking at this in season two, we'd be saying like all, uh, all the six top teams are on top of each other in terms of R&D terms. And it's going to be all about the drivers. And as you've seen, Vettel, the driver, has been making the difference so uh, more often than not this season. So we're going to try and... Uh 
forget about Mexico, basically, and remember how well we are doing at Italy, at Singapore, to be out qualifying him, doing better in the race, and take that same energy into Sao Paulo to at least try and match him. You know, here we are, uh, five and six in Q1. You know, if we can be there with him, that will just help him out, help the team out, and then it gives me a chance, maybe, maybe, to get ahead of him, get ahead of some of the other rivals, and try and claw back some points. But going into this one with... A bit of a, you know, sense of determination. I've got something to prove now. That engine failure was so annoying. So I'm driving it with a little bit of frustration. A little bit of anger, I guess. And sometimes that works really well sometimes for me on the F1 games. Q2 was a formality for us. Vettel does get through. Only just about, though. Very, very close stuff between him and the two Red Bulls and McLarens. Uh, Russell looking pretty damn handy, along with Sergio Perez, who's been a bit of a spanner in the works in the Alpine as of late. But um, at the same time, Russell actually gained quite a lot of time compared to the rest of us. So maybe more time to find here as uh, as, as the day goes on. On the Friday, of course, because it's not even Saturday. It's Friday qualifying here around Sao Paulo. And we're going to try and save the best till last. The clouds are actually coming over. It looks a bit doom and gloom and there is rain in the air for this weekend. I believe the sprint round tomorrow on Saturday will be in the rain. The Grand Prix will be dry so we set the car up for a dry race on Sunday even if it will compromise our sprint but the car felt awesome in Q3. I don't know, maybe the slightly cooler temperature with the clouds coming over helping us a little bit, but we got it absolutely supremely hooked up. But Russell looking quick as there as well with a purple lap time. Let's see what we can do across the line. It's going to be us ahead on provisional pole right now. Leclerc second place close as ever. I, don't, I think only a couple of hundreds of a second on our second flying lap. We actually go slower in the first sector and that means I just back out of it because there's no point going on because I'd already lost about two tenths in that first sector alone. That first sector was so perfect for me the first time and in a race where we need it, we slap this car on pole position but as I said, it was supremely close. Leclerc, you know, one corner and he could have got pole there. Perez in third, Vettel in fourth. Couldn't ask for much more going into the sprint race on Saturday. Well, the weather is not looking good today. We're expecting the downpours to continue into today's sprint. This will make for some very tricky conditions for all the teams. It's P1 for the start of the sprint round, of course, but now we've got that sprint race in the wet weather to go before we actually confirm where we'll be on the grid for the actual Grand Prix on Sunday. Will we actually be on pole for Sunday's race? Um, it's going to be tricky because, as I said, I've set the car up for the dry for Sunday's race. So this will be a bit of a difficulty on the rear end. Acceleration may be an issue. We've got a very quick Leclerc, Perez, Vettel right behind us. Verstappen up there in P5, kind of almost where Albon should be. But Verstappen is the Red Bull doing the better job right now in this crucial endpoint in the season as we go to five red lights to the F1 sprint here in Sao Paulo. Lights out. And away we go. It is a bit of a nervy stop, but we do get a better launch and remain ahead off the line versus Leclerc. But into turn one, cautious on the braking. Leclerc sends one down the inside, driving like a like, like a man who's got nothing to lose. I mean, to be fair, that's kind of how we need to be driving as well. Both me and Leclerc, us two, we've got the most to gain from being first in place here in the sprint, uh, heading into then Sunday's Grand Prix tomorrow. But Leclerc leads the way. We're hustling and harrying him, though. And round the outside, we go dancing the car round. And we're back up into P1 just about. Actually quite amazed we actually pulled off that move because Leclerc looked like he got the elbows out. But we just found the room and Leclerc lacked the grip on the inside on the tighter line to maintain his position. And instead now he's being attacked by Sebastian Vettel with a big dive down the inside. Vettel's already overtaken Perez then in this first sequence in this first sector. And having a go at the Ferrari. If he was to get into second place that would be the most ideal scenario. Audi won two in the sprint teammates one and two and we're the one ahead of Sebastian Vettel gaining all the points on him and all our rivals but we've got a long 12 laps to go or 11 laps to go as we finish on this first lap as Leclerc is right up my gearbox and as I said acceleration especially off that final corner proving very tricky in these conditions because the rear end just not there for me I've set the car up a lot lower 
downforce and you'd maybe want ideally in these conditions. It's going to be three wide into turn one. Vettel on the inside, Leclerc on the outside. We're so focused on Leclerc that Vettel's come out of nowhere with some great slipstream and he's down the inside of the centre S and up into P1. We just about cut a cash the car and remain in second place behind. It's all so close between Leclerc, Perez, Verstappen. You've got Albon diving down the inside of Russell to try and climb up to P7. It was a slower uh, Friday qualifying for Albon. He kind of almost would probably wishing he's where his teammate was in that second Red Bull up in P5. Albon's been the quicker guy this entire season, but Verstappen has been improving. But in these crucial two last races, you'd kind of uh, think the Red Bulls want to swap positions. But to be fair to Albon, it's a worse day for the other championship uh, contender, Pierre Gasly, down in P9. He's had a really horrendous uh, getaway and start to this race. He was in P6, so he's lost three positions in that opening uh, sequence of corners. As now Sonoda loses the back end. It's a spin and a crash now with the Haas and the Williams. And it's going to be Carlos Sainz who's at the Grand Prix along with the Williams car. And Sonoda just showing how tricky the conditions are. I'm sure most of us have set the car up for dry conditions. And Sonoda just loses the rear end. And so this sprint race will become even shorter with this safety car out now. The full core safety car. Lap 5, 1 to 6. We're getting going. And we're pulling alongside Vettel to try and apply some pressure into turn 1 to try and get this sprint lead back. Vettel into turn 1. He locks up. He goes a bit deep. We go down the inside. Bang tyres. We break early. Cut back now for this switch from left to right trying to find the traction but that's just not going to be possible as we're just waiting and waiting to apply ERS get the power down fully but Leclerc will get boxed in by Vettel Vettel's too focused on the Ferrari and we shoot round the outside late as you want and a bit daring and we get up into P1 now on lap 6 lap 7 up the hill onto lap 8 Vettel in the mirrors on the right hand side we're using ERS to try and push off and stay ahead but it's nose to tail Leclerc, Perez, Verstappen all right behind me in that shot when looking back into turn one though we've done just about enough to stay ahead of Vettel and not allow him to slip down the inside and just parking the car as awkwardly as we can in the middle of the circuit breaking in a straight line to try and just you know stop any sort of funny business but Vettel he might have another go is he going to pull through on the inside again oh he thought about it had a little look but again we're just getting to the racing line portion where he's going to try and move to before he does and just blocking any attempt of an overtake. If it could finish like this, this would be very ideal for us. It would mean, be, be a front row lockout and it is going to end like that as we come through lap 12. We basically did that every single lap, just blocked off Vettel, used the ERS tactically and we're going to finish and win the F1 sprint at Sao Paulo. It's going to be a 1-2 finish in this sprint for the Audi AAR F1 team. And that is going to mean a front row lockout for the Brazilian Grand Prix. That is the most ideal sprint we could have had. We gained the maximum points we could in that race. Vettel got second place, so one point off, seven points to him. Albon down in P9, so he scored zero points. So before even a wheel is turned on Sunday's Grand Prix, Vettel is going to be back level on points with Albon in the championship. Leclerc gains just a couple to, to get him in there and just reduce the gap he had. Uh, the big loser was Pierre Gasly in the middle of that one. Um, he did. He had to pit again. He, he had to make a second pit, uh, set of inters go because he had damage, I'm assuming, at some point. We just missed when that was, but other people tripped up over themselves. Lewis Hamilton did two pit stops. Such was the carnage around that wet Sao Paulo race. So not a great day in the office for the McLaren. A great day in the office for both myself and Sebastian Vettel heading into Sunday's Grand Prix. Formula One returns to Interlagos once again with a stage set for what promises to be another classic Sao Paulo Grand Prix. Sebastian Vettel famously clinched his third championship here in 2012 and just four years later, Max Verstappen treated us to one of the finest wet weather drives of all time. It's an unusual anti-clockwise race here at Interlagos where the Sao Paulo locals are packed into the grandstands at each of the 15 corners around this classic 2.7 mile circuit. 
Two very fast sections bookend the famous and highly technical Sector 2, where getting a good run out of Jun Sao into one of the two DRS zones will be key to any overtaking prospects today. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. It's the owner driver then in pole position, with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Leclerc, Lando Norris, and Oscar Piastri, Verstappen, Albon, Bottas, and Liam Lawson, Stroll, Drogovic, Theo Porcher and Mick Schumacher. Gasly, Russell, Esteban Ocon. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. And Robert Schwartzman, Sonoda, Magnussen, Sainz, and Lewis Hamilton rounds off the grid. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you with us here. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. Well, it was certainly a fairy tale sprint race there at Sao Paulo, but now it's the big one, the Grand Prix. The full 25 points on offer here, and I can't believe it. It's a front row lockout for Audi. This is the most ideal way, not only for you, forget the driver's championship, for us to also seal out this constructors' championship today and not have that stress on our shoulders going into Abu Dhabi. We've chosen the medium compound attire there, along with Leclerc, but so many people around us on the soft tyre. So I don't know whether they're going for a, a very aggressive two-stop or a very over-ambitious one-stop from soft to hard. Either way, like Mexico, I've chosen the middle compound where the others have chosen softs. And remember, in Mexico, just before our engine failure, I was catching up to P1 because my mediums were the better race tyre at that point in the race versus the soft. So I'm hoping this time around we actually get a chance to utilise that kind of strategy of playing the longer game of having the better race tyre, you know, 10 or you know, 11 laps into this race, basically. Um, and I can, I can actually see it through and then see how this plays out then. From P1, though, this is the best position to be in going into this race. So here we go then, two rounds to go. We go to five red lights to the Brazilian Grand Prix. Lights out, and away we go from pole position. It's a good getaway for us. It's a slow one for Sebastian Vettel. Leclerc dives down the inside. We've had a clean entry to turn one, and Leclerc gets through into P2. What a rocket ship start from the Ferrari, and it's the two medium tyre runners that lead this race one and two. Vettel down to third. Perez pressurising him behind. There's Pierre Gasly making a huge lunge. He has a massive job to do today and he dives down the inside to get up into P14. He's got four more cars to overtake to get into the point. He's on the softs along with the two Red Bull cars. So really all my rivals barring Leclerc with the only two in the medium boat in this kind of, uh, kind of five way championship battle and so I'm hoping well it seems definitely initially off the five red lights the medium compound tyre was actually the better tyre to be on for initial grip because remember it's the sprint round so I think all these soft tyres are used sets of soft tyres. Uh, saying that though, Verstappen is finally now getting up to speed and charging through and cutting a path through for him and Albon. Bit, no, a nice bit of teamwork there, Verstappen ahead of Albon but uh, Albon clearly just not got as much pace as Max today so he's using Max to cut through the traffic as they both gain one position as we now go back to our POV. Lap 6, so a few laps have gone by in this race. We're still in P1, but not for much longer. Leclerc round the outside with DRS so far. We've been doing quite well to be one second ahead of all the soft tyre runners. But now this battling is not going to help either of us as we try and go for a switch from left to right. Didn't quite work, but we get a good enough launch with DRS now to power back pass. And Vettel now coming out of nowhere with the dive like he was in the sprint. Just kind of, you know, turning up and arriving on the scene. 
Probably Leclerc focused too much on us and just didn't realise Vettel sent one down the inside. So Vettel's looking pretty damn handy again in dry conditions around Sao Paulo. But lap eight, my, oh, big snap of oversteer there on the curb. And Leclerc sends one down the inside. It's a big dive, takes us wide. And there goes Sebastian Vettel up through two positions into P1. He really has been the master of picking the right time to make overtakes. But we're coming back at both of them. It's going to be three abreast into turn one. Who's going to come out on top? Vettel on the inside. We're right on the inside. And they're too busy squabbling with each other that we just go down the inside. Thank you very much. Back up into P1. It's a 1-2 though now for the Audi AAR F1 team. And at this stage of the race, I'm thinking, surely I think these guys are maybe doing a two-stop. Even if they're not doing a two-stop, if they're doing a one-stop, I need to play a bit of a team game. I let off throttle and I let Sebastian Vettel through. Surprising, because so far we have been a bit selfish this entire episode. You know, we managed to stay ahead in P1 in the sprint. But I thought with my head a little bit, Vettel's on the softs. So if he wants to push away from me, let's, let's let him do that. He's going to come in earlier than me anyway. And then I'll have clean air to use those mediums. As we now see Albon struggling for some grip on the soft tyres. So maybe that's an indicator that these guys will be coming in pretty damn soon. As Oscar Piastri on the mediums, remember, attacking the Red Bull. So is this the phase of the crossover period where the mediums are the better race tyre? So I let Vettel through at the right time just to let him use the remaining amount of tyre on that soft just to kind of, you know, get as much uh, kind of uh, pace as he can, use him as a bit of a toe to pull me along. Albon's in on lap 10, and it's only going to be one more lap until Vettel is going to come in. You can see we're six tenths ahead of Leclerc. Use Vettel as a bit of a toe to pull away, slingshot ahead, and get back up into P1, but Vettel's in, so... In the end of it, was it any kind of was it worthwhile letting him through? Maybe not, but I wanted to give him a bit of a good gesture that I am also being a team player here. I am thinking about him, and he's out in P12, way ahead of Albon in P20. Even Verstappen and Lando Norris as well, P17 and 18. But it's saying that all of them have a lot of traffic. Vettel has four cars ahead of him, uh, and there's about you know five, six cars between him and Verstappen and, and, and Albon, etc. So a lot of traffic going on. Gasly's finally in. He he stayed out a little bit longer on his softs and the overcut has surprisingly been the way to go. Gasly stayed out like three laps longer on his soft tyres and has actually come out ahead of Albon. So what is going on with Albon today? He's on the hards though, so maybe that's why. Even, you know, the fresh hard tyres versus worn softs. Gasly gained time. Maybe that was it, but Gasly's out on mediums. Albon is on hards. Verstappen's on mediums. Vettel's on mediums. So, a couple of them doing two stops, maybe. Albon maybe converting to a very long one stop, as now onto lap 16, Leclerc overtakes me with ease, because I've actually done that on purpose, because I was actually not really gaining too much time on him. So, I want to kind of sit behind him and save a bit of fuel, save a bit of ERS and use him to tow me along because we're setting nothing but red sectors but this DRS is so powerful so on the next lap I'm sure we'll be a bit quicker in sector one meanwhile we've got Vettel making moves now having a go and Yuki Tsunoda to get himself up into P7 I think he's the lead well he very much is the lead uh, car that pit early from those soft tyres and he's trying to do his best again clean air but Tsunoda is giving this a real good fight the two side by side up the hill down the crest of the sector two bit of contact made and Tsunoda has uh, given Vettel some damage. It's Agent Sonoda in the Alpha Tauri, in the junior Red Bull team. He's conflicted some damage on Sebastian Vettel. Red Bull will be loving that. Albon will be loving that because Vettel comes in for a very early second stop, pretty much an extra stop or uh, you know, a considerable amount of time earlier than he would have wanted to from that two-stop, if he was on a two-stop, that is. Um, so that is going to play into the hands of Albon and Red Bull. And they've got their junior uh, team to thank, Alpha Tauri. Obviously, I'm not saying it was on purpose, but of course it had to be an Alpha Tauri that conflicted that damage on Vettel. So is that going to change things and shift the, the paradigm towards Albon and Red Bull now as we have a fantastic pit stop and jump Leclerc in the pit. I didn't really mind if we actually stayed behind him because my plan was working. I actually set a green first sector sat behind Leclerc so even though it didn't look like that plan really worked, I felt it did because I was gaining time and we were both pulling away from the cars behind us before we made that pit stop. Just an added bonus now that we've actually jumped him in the pit lane so pretty much pin perfect. 
used him as a bit of a horse to my carriage to tow me along. And then in the pits, jumped him back up into P1. And now we'll defend him as we are back into P1 on lap 19 with the remaining few pitting finally for their first pit stops. Uh, so Leclerc, second place. Lando Norris in third. Verstappen fourth. Piastri fifth. Russell sixth. Gasly ahead of Albon like we saw before Albon in eighth but now it doesn't matter that Albon's down in eighth place because he'll still be gaining points on his main rival his closest rival Sebastian Vettel because he's way down in P15 now so this race has completely been flipped on its head in terms of that battle of Vettel versus Albon at one point I thought okay Vettel's gonna completely blow Albon out of the park in terms of points going to Abu Dhabi but now Albon will be gaining some points and he won't really care that Gasly Leclerc myself Ahead of, ahead of him because the gap was so much larger in the championship so now for us at this team we're focusing on ourselves we cut to a very weird crash and a glitch that is because you can see look at that tire glitching in a line um, from the front right of Carlos Sainz it's kind of glitching uh, forwards and backwards off him so bit of a I think he hit the pit pit wall or the pit pit uh, the wall on the pit exit and glitched through and just the, the game just broke a little bit and uh, he's parked it in the middle. He's kind of disappeared now all of a sudden. And so this safety car is out now in this race with 16 laps to go. That will help Vettel a little bit because it will bunch us all up now. So he has half a chance of, you know, getting those, uh, you know, getting that overtaking magic working as he's done so many times this season to try and claw his way back up into maybe one measly point to limit the damage to Albon. But right now we're on the restart. I'm trying to play this as uh, kind of clever as I can of slowing down and I'm going to accelerate right at the start finish line because uh, that's the safety guard line, but you can only overtake from the start finish line. So we're going to go slow, try and warm up the tyres as well. These hard tyres, pretty horrendous to warm up and then we'll get going. So going to weave about a little bit, try and get more heat in. But Leclerc overtakes us. Wait, hang on. Wait a minute. Wasn't that an illegal overtake? We hadn't crossed the start finish line yet. Uh, yeah. Leclerc into P1. We defend Lando Norris. Here's a replay of that safety car start. And Albon, um, for all that we said about uh, Sonoda uh, helping Albon out by taking uh, some uh, front wing off Vettel, Sonoda die bombs Albon and Albon loses a position. So he's now down to, I think, P10 in the entire order. So Sonoda maybe heard me in the commentary and is wanting to balance things out potentially and, you know, be a bit of unbiased driver out there. But for us, we're looking to re-overtake Leclerc now onto lap 24. I'm mystified, confused at what just happened there. I know I was maybe playing a bit too too much of a clever game for myself and maybe I've got my uh, only myself to blame. But I swear that Leclerc overtook us before the start-finish line. Uh, or maybe, maybe maybe I'm wrong on the rule. Maybe there's a, a, fur, a, a previous line before that that he's allowed to overtake her. Either way now, we're squabbling for P1 here now. But we're into P1 and we're trying to keep it as we overtook him through the center S. He's on the outside, but we're using plenty of ERS up the hill. We're on the inside line and we will maintain P1 in this Grand Prix. But now it's just about trying to keep him at bay because that Ferrari, I mean, he's so, so quick in a straight line, especially with DRS being so early up that hill. He's on the inside. We're going to squeeze him to the wall and then take to the racing line on the right. Leclerc goes a bit deep. We try and go for the crisscross, kind of cut back in, go tighter. Behind! Oh, it's a McLaren who spun. It's not Gasly. It's Lando Norris. Lando spun it at the center S and that will elevate Gasly up a couple of positions as we continue to fight Leclerc now on the exit and we get back into P1, but it's all kicking off here and look behind there's so many cars close together Vettel up into P13 looking to try and overtake Hamilton and Perez Albon down in P10 Gasly fighting Liam Lawson for P6 but uh, Lando, he was the lead McLaren up in uh, in P5, and he span it from P5, and that's inadvertently actually helped his teammate out. So uh, a driver error, an AI mistake from Lando, who's AI, has actually helped out Gasly's AI in the championship fight. And it's a classic AI mistake of just too much throttle, and they, they, they do this sometimes, just spinning out. And we've seen it a few times, you know, at the Italian Grand Prix in previous seasons. So, uh, yeah, Lando's pirouette. 
uh, elevating Gasly into some crucial more points for the championship fight for his sake as we now continue this race-long battle with Leclerc. I mean, we were fighting Leclerc in Mexico, you remember, so this is the kind of the fight we never got to, uh, you know, see continued in Mexico because of my engine failure, but now Leclerc's gone a bit too deep into turn one. We sent him a bit wide with the elbow, and Verstappen has got to the inside, and he's in P2. The Red Bull's in second. It's the wrong Red Bull. Albo will be fuming. This is where he needs to be to try and make the most of this race, but it's Verstappen now trying just to fight for his own pride in this season. He's, oh, he's taken it off circuit. Verstappen pushes us wide. Leclerc's into P1. Piastri up into P2. Verstappen fighting. What on earth was that? I just spoke about him wanting to drive for some pride in this season, and he just goes ahead and takes me straight off and wide. It's all kicking off in this race, and things have changed again. Leclerc in P1. It might be a 1-2 for Ferrari right now. Verstappen's trying to uh, stop that happening, but uh, we're going to try and use their fight to get in the middle of it. They're too busy squabbling with each other that we just go waltzing around the outside of Russell and Piastri. They're too con uh, concerned with the Red Bull car. And uh, we're back into P3, and now we'll just keep up with uh, Verstappen to try and chase after Leclerc now. 2.5 uh, the gap, so there's uh, plenty of time still to bridge this gap. And oh, Sonoda! Oh, Sonoda's been in the wars everywhere. Yeah, damage on Vettel, dive down the inside of Albon, and now he's spun it in the last sector, and he's out this Grand Prix, and we'll bring out a second safety car to make it a sprint right at the end. Leclerc in the lead, Verstappen second, myself third, Piastri fourth, Russell fifth, Gasly in P6, and I believe Albon is in P10, and Vettel is only two positions behind him in P12, and we've all bunched up, so... Is the championship order about to change once again live in this race? Because we've got a bit of a sprint to go. And here we go now as we go green. Looking to make a move on Verstappen. But he might make a move on Leclerc and me. Leclerc locks up though into turn one. It will invite Verstappen through Piastri as well. And Piastri leads the race. But he actually made contact with Verstappen. I'm pretty sure he did. And so Piastri, yes he does. He pulls in. It was a fleeting bit of glory for the Australian and the Ferrari, but he pits in late, so late drama here. As we dive down the inside of Leclerc, we make contact. Why is he turning into me? Give me some room, man. As we now shove him off and make room for ourselves. Get the elbows out, because I'm desperate here. I wasn't having any of that. I was not about to end that sequence of corners in third place. We kept to our guns, and Leclerc has to sell for third place. And now, on the last lap of the Grand Prix, Leclerc is too busy, focused behind him. Gasly has got up into P4. He's overtaken Russell for more points in this championship. But can we get a further seven points in this championship by overtaking the staff? But on the last lap of the Grand Prix, I've tried my hardest. Purple first sector, green the second. This will be my fastest lap of the entire Grand Prix. DRS open, ERS, we're gaining, 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 not enough, not enough, Max Verstappen wins the Brazilian Grand Prix, but we come through for second place, it's still going to be a massive haul of points, Leclerc, Gasly scoring as well, Albon and Vettel, I don't know where they are, but that may have just changed the outlook of the championship into Abu Dhabi. The, car, the Red Bull team are ready and waiting to celebrate a thoroughly deserved win. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I think the key here was just the quality of the racecraft, you know? I mean, how many overtakes did they make overall? I'm sure we have a stat person keeping score somewhere, and it's fantastic to watch, isn't it? This is a strategic sport at the end of the day, but it's always really gratifying to see close war battles on track. It's what all the fans are after. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sports that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. With that result, the sport's newest team can no longer be touched at the top of the table. What an incredible journey this has been for a team many had written off a short time ago. They 
are the Formula One world champions. We couldn't get that elusive second win of the season, but second place is still going to be pretty damn awesome uh, if you think about where everyone else finished. I think we've done a number on bringing down this ch championship, you know, a deficit we had, 21 points. Um, it's not quite the win and win that I said we needed to aim for, the miracle, but it's still pretty damn amazing. We've done the impossible maybe here today. Uh, a little bit of luck, obviously, like Sonoda taking out Vettel's front wing, Albon getting stuck in traffic and being pushed down the order. And so it means in all of this, Verstappen gains 27, but I gain 26 points here. Leclerc 20, Gasly 12. Vettel actually scores eight from his sprint race win, uh, his sprint race second place, sorry, and one point. So he got P10 then, that must mean, in the race. He got P10 and Albon got eighth place with four points. So going into Abu Dhabi, we've pulled it off somehow. We've turned it around from the engine failure and we are now back into this fight. We're on the outside shout because there's only three points covering the top four drivers. Albon leads into Abu Dhabi. Two points back is Gasly and then three apiece is Leclerc and Vettel with the outside shout because we're seven points back so you know if the pundits if this was on tv and the pundits were talking about it they'd probably be talking about the top four fight and i'm i'm an outside mathematical chance but i'll take that i will take that like you may have heard there crofty saying we have done one championship though we have secured the constructors championship for Audi AAR F1. It's our first one on this game and that is a weight off our shoulders for next episode. So next time, it is all about the Drivers' Championship. Five drivers can win it from four different teams. It's going to be an absolute blockbuster. But we are the world champions, the Constructors' world champions. Now, let's see if we can do anything about that Drivers' title. Till next time, guys, if you have enjoyed it, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly, full-on content. I'll see you guys then. Goodbye.